Hi, I'm Madison and welcome back to my channel. Today I have my Sophie Luck guide video. So if you are not aware of who Sophie Luck is, Sophie Luck is a dark romance author. She primarily started out as a mafia romance author, but is currently like branching out from that. All of her books that I do own, oh shoot, The Savage is in the other room. Let me go grab The Savage. I just realized I forgot that book. It is not here with me. <laughs> Like I was saying, Sophie has currently got one, two, three, four series out currently. Her Underworld series was the first series that she wrote. She then rebranded them and changed up the reading order. So they are a bit different than if you were to read them when she first published them. My very first book that I read from her was Ivan, um, which is one of my favorites. You can actually see my very first time reading her, I made a vlog called do I like mafia romance? And I tried a bunch of different mafia romances and I read Sophie and I was like, oh my God, I do love mafia romance. <laughs> so that is where Ivan came from. One of my favorites of all time, hands down, without a doubt, I could reread this book over and over again and not get sick of it. But this is an underworld series. These are Russian brothers, but they actually end up being set all over Europe, which is really cool. Like I said, she then has the Brutal Birthright series. This follows the Gallo family and the Griffin family. This, these are Chicago mafias. Um, the Gallos are the Italian Chicago mafia and the Griffins are the Irish Chicago mafia. <laughs> and then there are also different mafias there. You do have the Polish and then you also have the Russians who come in as well. After that, we then have Kingmakers. These are by far her biggest books and the Kingmakers is set at a remote elite academy university for mafia children. And when you go to this university set in the middle of a random island in Europe, you are either placed in four different sectors. You are either placed as an heir, an enforcer, a spy or an accountant and there are five books in this series totally complete and um what's really interesting is that these follow the kids of the brutal birthright series and the kids of the underworld series which is why it's so important to have read those all first in order to understand everything that goes on here and then lastly we have her sinners duet which is there are no saints and there is no devil which i actually do have both of these completely tabbed which is really gorgeous this is a serial killer duet we follow mara and cole I'm going to talk about these two right now since they are not part of my whole reading order thing. You can read these without reading anything else. This is completely separate from everything else that she's written. We follow Mara and Cole. Mara is a starving artist. Literally, like, she's starving. She's, like, got no money. She's trying to make ends meet. And then you have Cole, and he is a billionaire artist, but he's also a serial killer. And he has a secondary counterpart who is also a serial killer and who is also a billionaire. And the two of them are constantly competing with one another in the art world and in the serial killer world. And what ends up happening is that Cole ends up falling for Mara and the other serial killer decides that he kind of wants to take Mara from him and kill Mara. And so it's the two of them kind of going after Mara. Cole isn't sure if he wants to love Mara, if he wants to kill Mara. He's like a psychopath, sociopath, doesn't really have any feelings. But as he gets to know Mara, he starts to have these feelings. And Mara is someone who, you know, kind of awakens her dark side by being with Cole. It's a really awesome duet, but there's a lot of triggers in this. So do be aware before you go into them. But it's pretty hot. It's pretty sexy. It's pretty crazy. Okay, so let's get into my Sophie Lark reading order. So my first thing to say is you should start with her Brutal Birthright series. So you should start with Brutal Prince. This is book one in the Brutal Birthright series. This is Ada and Callum's romance. The tropes in this are arranged marriage and enemies to lovers. We then have, after that, Stolen Air. This is Mikolaj and Nessa's book. Mikolaj is part of the Polish Brat Fasago and he is, that's probably not the way you say it, but oh well. Um, <laughs> Sorry about that. And this is a Beauty and the Beast captor captive romance. So he ends up capturing Nessa, who is the youngest Griffin child, and it is their captor captive romance. Pretty dark. This does start off like pretty high stakes and like messed up in the very beginning. So huge triggers there. If um, suicide is one for you, that is one that I always forget to point out that happens in this because it's in the prologue. After them, you have my Brutal Birthright OTP, and that is The Savage Lover, which is Nero and Camille. Camille is not part of the mafia at all. Nero is the bad boy of the Italian mafia, the one that everyone thinks is just totally off the rails. He does whatever he wants. He loves fast car and girls and money and all that kind of stuff. And what I really love about this one is that it is a heist romance. Not everyone loves the heist aspect. I think the heist aspect is so much fun. A lot of this reminds me of like really cool video games as well when I read it and like a lot of the action movies. So that's why I super vibe with this one. After them, we then have Bloody Heart. This is Dante and Simone's book. Dante is the eldest of the um, Italian mafia children. And this is his second chance romance with Simone, who he met when he was a teen. 
fell in love with her and then she just disappeared off the face of the earth and then they end up reconnecting years and years later. This does have the secret baby trope in it. It's also second chance and Simone is this really dope black supermodel which is makes her the best. After then we then have Broken Vow. This is Raylan and Riona's book. This does feel quite disconnected because this one is a bodyguard romance which I freaking love. Riona is the middle child of the Griffin family. She is kind of like the smart, the head, the lawyer and she ends up you know <laughs> someone's trying to kill her in the beginning of this and so Raylan ends up becoming her bodyguard. Raylan is actually Dante's best friend from the previous book. They were both um, in the army together and so Raylan ends up taking her to his farm in some southern state and they end up hiding out there. So it does feel a bit disconnected from the rest of the books because they are completely away from everyone else so you don't really see what anyone else is doing during this time. And so this one like I said is um, bodyguard relationship and then it's kind of like grumpy sunshine but like she's the grump and here's the sunshine in this. And then the last one to read is then Heavy Crown. This is Sebastian and Yelena's book. Sebastian is the youngest boy in the Galo family so the youngest Italian child and this is his romance with Yelena who is the daughter of a Russian bratva and so theirs is a huge forbidden romance because they have been at war with the Russians throughout the last six books and this is kind of the culmination of all the actions of all the other children and everything else that they've done so what's really cool is like how everything does culminate in this book and all the shocking things that get revealed and how everything ties together so really really awesome one. This then does have a epilogue that does lead into Kingmakers because the first book in Kingmakers follows their son. So once you're done with the Brutal Birthright you then want to move on to the Underworld series. You don't want to go straight into Kingmakers. So once you finish those six you then go on to Ivan. This is Ivan and Sloan. Sloan is an American hit woman in Russia. No doing her hits. And Ivan is the head of the Petrovs and that is a Russian Bratva based out of, uh, shoot, which one is it? St. Petersburg, that's where it's set. And so she is sent to kill him and then he ends up capturing her and it is their romance. It's so badass, so awesome, freaking love them. Oh my God. After that, you then want to read Snow. This is Snow and Sasha's book. Snow is a um, underground fighter. And so he does box matches and he ends up, you know, people bet on him and things like that. And you know, the mafia is always there. This is how they make some of their money. And Sasha is a doctor whose family ends up getting um, kind of into debt with the Russians. And so she ends up having to sell herself into service to the mafia as a doctor in order to help pay off her family's debts. And it's the two of them having a forbidden romance because they're not meant to be together and then falling for one another. And so this is a really cool take on the mafia aspect of it because they're both not directly involved in it, but they're both kind of like enslaved to the mafia in different ways and then wanting to fall in love and run away, which is really cool. Then you have Roman's book. This is Roman and Mila's romance. Mila is actually Sasha's sister, which is super interesting. And this is actually set in Paris because Roman is a Russian brotha based in Paris and it is a bully romance. He used to bully her back in school and then they end up um, kind of coming together because he's building this new casino and she's a journalist sent to kind of like find out if there's anything going on there. And so it's their romance, which is really, really fun. It was my first ever bully romance that I read and actually enjoyed because I'd read some before that I just didn't, I just didn't like. And so I really love that about their romance. I will say their romance isn't like vital to going into Kingmakers. I just think it's a fun one to read because it's really awesome and it does have Sasha's sister in it. But then what you do need to read though after this is book four in the Underworlds, which is Dom. Dom's book is so, so, so vital. And I think it's really interesting that a lot of people don't read it. They only read Ivan and Snow. You don't have to read Roman if you don't want to. I just really enjoyed it. But if you're gonna only read three of the Underworld, you have to do Ivan, Snow, and Dom. Why do you have to do Dom? Many reasons. First reason, the fact that Dom is Ivan's brother and Dom ends up falling in love with Lara and Lara is the police commissioner's daughter. So it is a forbidden romance there because he is the second in command to the St. Petersburg Bratva and she is the police commissioner's daughter. And so it's their forbidden romance, but their son is um, one of the love interests in the series later on. And Dom's book also links in very heavily plot wise. I think it's super strange that like not everyone says, oh, you should definitely read Dom because I think if you don't read Dom, you're missing so much. Also, I love Dom and Lara's romance. It was a total five star for me. It so shocked me out of the park, but I love them to death. And like, I just think that Dom is such an important character to know because he plays such large parts in everything. And he's just mentioned when it comes to Russia all the damn time. So I'm like, why wouldn't you read 
Dom. Otherwise, you just know Dom from Ivan's story, but you don't know him as he like develops and how everything changes. Anyway, once you finish those four, you can then move on to, well, four or three. After that, you can then move on to Kingmakers. So the reason why is because the first four books in Kingmakers, which is the heir, the rebel, the uh, bully and the spy, all have an arc. So there is a storyline that is going through the four of these books that all culminates at the very end. And so you should be reading these in order in order to kind of figure out what's happening because each event in each book kind of ends up to like a snowball effect that keeps on happening. And there is the spy and you don't know who the spy is. The hero of this book is kept secret because you don't know who the spy is. You kind of have an inkling that he exists throughout these books and you have to try and kind of piece together and figure out who this person is what are their motives? Which of these characters is like the spy and what that could be? And it is so much fun. I had such a blast trying to figure it out. And I did. I figured out so much stuff because I was analyzing these things as I was reading and it was such a fun time, which is why I think it's so important to read everything else because it helps you figure out what's going on here and it makes it a way more enjoyable experience. Sure, you can just read these like as is, but if you want to get the full experience, please read everything else beforehand. So first we have the air. This is Leo and Anna's book. Leo is the son of Sebastian and Yelena and Anna is the daughter of Mikolaj and Nessa. So this is their romance. They are friends to lovers. What's really interesting about her Kingmakers is that there are three POVs in the first four books. So this third POV in this book is Dean. So there is a love triangle in this and Dean then comes in later on. So Dean is like our villain. After the heir, you then have the rebel. This is Miles Griffin's book. So this is the son of Ada and Callum, who was our first couple of Brutal Birthright. And this is his romance with Zoe Romero. This is a forbidden romance because Zoe is actually engaged to someone else. And so Miles has to kind of find a way to like end up being with her because like they can't be together since she is engaged to someone else. But it's like a whole like mafia engagement. Like she doesn't want to marry this dude because this dude is freaking awful. But she also can't get out of it because that's her role as like a mafia princess and she has to get married to him. So that's their romance. Miles is so much fun. Their romance is so much fun. And the third POV in this is Kat who is um, Zoe's sister. And Kat doesn't want to be at Kingmakers. She does not belong here. She feels like she's so out of her place because she's this really sweet person, but she gets dropped into Kingmakers where everyone is so ruthless and she's like trying to figure out how to survive. So this was such a whirlwind one. This like really hooked me into Kingmakers and I freaking loved it. After that, we then have The Bully and this is Kat and Dean's book. This is why I think so many of these things should be read in order because I know a lot of people just skip everything and just read Kat and Dean's book, but like you really shouldn't because you have seen Dean's character development over the last two books as to how he gets to where he is in this story. And also Kat, how she comes to be as she is in this book and how they've both changed over the course of the books and how everything has led them to the situation where Kat ends up being kind of his like play toy during this. And it's a bully romance, obviously. It is so beautifully done. I love this book so much. It also has some of the best steamy scenes I have read. I would say out of all of her books, this is my favorite one in terms of the spice. The spice in this is so perfect. It's not even funny. So I really, really love this. This is also the first one where you start to meet the spy. The spy is the third POV in this. And that's when you start to really, really be able to kind of like piece things together and some of the questionable things you've seen going on in the first two books and things start to kind of link. Oh, I didn't even say this. Dean is the son of Yelena's estranged brother from the Brutal Birthright series. And so he kind of hates everyone because of that. And so because he's part of the Russian Bratva, this is where a lot of the Russian stuff comes in in this book. And like, I don't want to spoil how or why because it's super, super fun. But that's also why you need to like read everything. And then after that, we then have the spy. Now, obviously, I can't tell you the couple on this because that would be like a huge spoiler. So like, why would I do that? But um, this was a really fun one. I can't really say much about it. It was really cool. It was really awesome to see how everything kind of culminates in this and how she kind of weaves all of her series together and all the little actions and events that have happened and how they have all kind of cannonballed and snowballed into like the events of this book and how everything comes to be. Super, super fun. This also then leads into the next book, the final book in Kingmakers. So this is the culmination of the entire arc and I don't want to say too much more about that. But then after this, you then have The Savage and this follows Sabrina and Adric's stories. Now, Sabrina is the daughter of my favorite Brutal Birthright couple, 
Nero and Camille. And Sabrina is someone who is the best friend and roommate to the female heroine in this book, um, which is where she comes in. And then Adric is someone who you've heard about throughout the entire Kingmaker series because he just graduated at the start of the whole Kingmaker's Chronicles. It is very much disconnected from the other four books, but it does take into account all the events of the other four books. And like I said, Adric is also the son of Dom and Lara, who are the fourth underworld couple. This is an alpha alpha romance. Sabrina and Adric end up teaming up in Russia to start their own criminal enterprise there through like these designer drugs that they're creating. So does their romance. It's really fast paced. It's super action packed. It's super steamy and smutty. It is just like a chaos. The two of them are definitely like an Icarus Icarus romance and yeah. I do want to quickly mention what Sophie's reading order is. So Sophie's reading order that she recommends is that you read the six real birthright books. Then you read The Heir and The Rebel. Then after that, you want to read Ivan and Snow, these two. And then you want to move back into The Kingmakers and then go to The Bully. That's just to keep everything fresh. Although I feel like you're fine doing it my way instead so that you kind of keeping everything. I, I just prefer my way. <laughs> my way I think my way works and it's how I tell all my friends to read it and so far it's been working for my friends <laughs> so that's what I have to say okay let's get into my T ranking of all of her books all of her couples that I have read so far I'm super excited to get into this very excited to see what you guys want to think of my couples and yeah oh cool okay so hopefully this is screen recording I'm gonna be really upset afterwards if this is not so without further ado let's get this a shot so I'm gonna start with the most obvious, which are my OT. Well, actually, let's just go through each of these individually, which is funny. Okay, so first we have the heir, Anna and Leo. They are cute. Um, I think I just answered my question there. They're, they're, they're cute. They're a cute couple. They're fine. They're not like my fave, but they're adorable. The bully, which is Kat and Dean. Oh, easy, easy. This is a hardcore OTP couple. Love them to death. They surprised the crap out of me how much I loved them. Um, oh, the Savage is next. Another OTP couple. Oh, Camille and Nero. Oh my God. Kat and Dean are great because their relationship forms over the course of like a three book with their character arcs. And then together, they're just so amazing together. Like you would never think of it, especially as like a bully romance. It shocked me. The Savage loved it. I just love Nero so much. He's such an amazing hero. Like I loved him to death. He's very hit or miss. This book is very hit or miss for a lot of people. It'll either be your favorite or it'll be like an average book for you. For me, it ended up being a huge favorite. We then have Brutal Prince. I'm putting Ada and Callum as um, a power. Can you move for me, please? I just want to move them. Hello. Why is it not listening? Ah, that was such an accident. Go away. No. So Brutal Prince is power couple. I love Ada and Callum. I really do love them. They're a couple that I've loved seeing in all the books and I love their characters individually. When I read their romance, it was right after I read Yvonne and they just didn't live up to that same level. So they were like, uh, I love them as a couple. They're a really, really awesome power couple, but their book just wasn't my favorite. I do want to go back and reread it though. I'd be really curious to see if I'd prefer it a second time around now that I'm so invested in the series. I really think I'd end up ranking it higher, but as for now, they're just a power couple for me, which I dig them. There are no saints. Oh, this is a hard one. This is not supposed to come up this early. Ah, I don't know. Um, Mara and Cole. I mean, they are, they are meant to be. I mean, honestly, could they be an OTP couple? Maybe. I'm going to leave them as meant to be for now. And I might change them later. The Savage, that's another power couple for me. Love Sabrina and Adric. I prefer Sabrina to Adric as a character. Adric was great. He did some things that I just didn't love. Sabrina though, such a badass. She's so cool. I freaking love her. She was awesome. So th these two are just a power couple. You can't not, you know, accept that. They are a power couple and that's where they belong. And they're awesome. Um, Roman, they're going to be meant to be. I really did love these two. Um, ooh, Broken Bow. This is Raylan Riona. This book is either everyone's favorite or it's like a chill, like we really love this book. It just missed that being five star barely. So for me, this was one of those books. It didn't end up being my favorite in the series, but these two were totally like meant to be. Um, you know what? I'm going to put uh, Mara and Cole as I ship it. I'm changing that. They're definitely like an I ship it couple. Um, the Spy, this is, oh, I can't actually say who this is, but the Spy, this couple, this couple, they are a... They are a, mm, mm, 
Oh, what, what is the rebel doing there? That is not where he belongs. Give me a second to think about them. Okay, Ivan and Sloan are, oh shit, they're an OTP, 100%. They are like my favorite. These, these OT, these are like my three OTP couples, hands down. No one can ever beat them. I love them. And it's so funny because they're each from each of her different series. The Rebel are definitely, I ship it. Oh my freaking God. Miles and Zoe like really surprised me because especially since I didn't love the air. When I went into the Rebel, I was like, oh, hopefully this would be a good one. Miles and Zoe knocked it out of the park for me. Love them so freaking much. And they probably would have been an OTP couple had it not been the fact that Dean and Kat were so freaking amazing with one another. So they're just an eye shipper, but I ship them hard freaking core. Oh my God, I love them so much. Okay, then we're gonna go into Heavy Crown. This is Yelena and Sebastian's book. Um, they are totally, ooh. Mm, I love these two a lot. Um, they're meant to be. Their book is messy, action packed. I like their book more for the action and the plot than their relationship, I feel like. I love their relationship too, but there are a couple things in there, but they're really awesome together. They're totally like meant to be hands down. Um, so I really did love them. Okay, Bloody Heart, they cute. I'm so sorry, I don't know. It's so funny, people either give this like, oh, they're cute or they freaking love this couple. Um, this was a second chance romance that just didn't work for me. And I feel like second chance romance is a very hit or miss. I either freaking love second chance romances or they just end up being pretty average. And this ended up being one of those second chance romances that was pretty average. Then we have, um, oh, this is Dom. Oh my God. Oh my God, Dom and Lara are amazing. Oh, they are such an eye shipper couple. Ooh. Love them to death. They are so cute together. Um, Stolen Air, once again, this is definitely an I ship it couple. There's just something about them that like really pulled me in, especially because Mikolaj was someone who I hated at the beginning of the book and then found myself just falling for him. And like, you can't help but just ship them. They're so adorable. Okay, then you have Snow and Sasha. Now Snow and Sasha are a very interesting couple because I love them together. I super, super ship them. The problem is that when I read this book for some weird ass reason, I felt like I had read this before. And so it kind of ruined my enjoyment of the book, which is no one's fault but my own. And I wish I could explain it. Um, so they are definitely like a power couple for me, um, for sure, a power couple. And then the spy, you know what? Nah, I'm gonna make them, oh my God, I hate this ranking. I already hate that I did this. This is already annoying me. Cause these two, okay, so these two, the spy is also a power couple. Can I move things around now that I've done it? Is that like allowed? Am I allowed to like change my thoughts on things? Ah, this is so difficult, but I'm gonna keep this like this for now. And that's just like something that could change. So that is my tier ranking portion of this done. Okay, so that is it for my Sophie Lark video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know a lot of people have been asking me about what to do. I hope you guys enjoyed my tier ranking as well. That was very stressful. <laughs> and yeah, that's gonna be it. If you guys have any other authors that you would like to see me do guide videos for, please let me know in the comments down below. If you guys didn't enjoy, if you guys didn't enjoy this video, please hit the like button down below. If you wanna see more of me, please go to my channel. And until next time, thanks a bunch everyone. Bye-bye.